I know you guys have just got all the keynotes and stuff, so yeah, this is I guess with the first session, right? Like one of the first sessions after. So um, yeah, so this is the purpose of this uh, presentation is to kind of go ahead and give a little, give people a little in depth about Nginx um, Ingress, how it works, a little bit about it, um, and then also how to contribute back, how to develop different features, whether they're going to be proprietary features for for whatever it is that you're working on or whether it's something that you want to contribute back to the community. So we're going to go in depth. So how many of you guys actually use um, Nginx Ingress in a deployment? So, so a couple of you guys. Um, so how many people have actually um, created an annotation or a config map change? Okay, so a few of you. A few of you are pretty versed in it. So yeah, so my name is Fernando. Um, I work at the IBM Container Service and I mainly work on the Ingress controller. So we have our own proprietary Ingress controller um, and we're also looking to support the community version. So I've been contributing and kind of getting a handle on things and learning how to do it. So I found uh, an easy way and useful way of, of actually building with Minikube and testing out your features. So that's what I'm gonna go over today. So, uh, just a brief overview, right? So ingress, right? What's what's the actual meaning of ingress? So it pretty much is going in something, right? Like I guess I'm ingressing back here. I guess like I'm going into the ingressing into something. So so that's like the actual definition for it. But in Kubernetes, we have an ingress resource, which is this um, API object, which is going to manage external. Um, is going to manage um, access to your external service in the cluster. So um, that's pretty much what you have. And if if you don't know what a service is, it's pretty much a logical set of pods. Uh, uh, def it defines that set of pods, and then it exposes them to the outside world using e either cluster IP. Well, cluster IP they just stay inside, but uses either node port or load balancer. And I'm mainly going to go over the node port which is what I use for Minikube. And then you have the ingress controller, which um, what that does is it monitors the ingress resources and it monitors any updates, any ads, anything done, and creates pretty much this configuration. So what, what it'll do in this case, in Nginx ingress is um, it monitors the ingress resources and it'll build an Nginx configuration based off of that, which is a whole set of rules to, to the server and how, how everything's gonna work. So um, so we have that. And yeah, so let me kind of show you a little diagram. So request comes in, it'll hit the ingress resource and usually you have paths. So like, uh, you know, you can have slash S1 will point you to service one, slash S2 will point you to service two. And then it'll go ahead and hit the actual application on the pod. So that's a little bit of how it works. So. So um, if if you see node port, right? We're gonna we're gonna be using node port to expose items on Minikube, and what node port does is it exposes the service on the on the same port of each selected node in the cluster. So um, each node will technically have a node IP and a node port. So we're, I'll show you a little bit how how that works uh, later in the demo. So, okay, so uh, I don't know, ha has anyone seen any confusion between what um, Nginx version to use? So there's there's two separate ones. And sometimes you see one from the actual Kubernetes community. And then there's also one from the Nginx Inc community, right? So, which is also open source, but uh, there's it, it's kind of different, right? Like one of them is built on the other one. And a lot of people wonder which one should I use which one, right? So uh, I'll go over just a couple of small differences, but um, they pretty much work in different ways, right? The community version from the Kubernetes community builds just one big configuration and, and it moves pretty fast. The community moves pretty fast. Um, we have great maintainers and um, all these features are always being added. And, you know, uh, I can probably get together with anyone later and see if we can, we can, I can go over like a roadmap, what's going on with that. Um, and um, so it has a bunch of different uh, third-party modules in it. Um, and it has very different annotations. So uh, one thing about Ingress resources is they're not super portable because the annotations 
are pretty much based off the ingress resource that's that's being used. So, you know, there's nginx.kubernetes.io, and then the annotation, there's, you know, nginx.org, and then the annotation for this, uh, this version of the ingress controller. So there's lots of differences. Uh, and when, when determining what to do, I mean, I, I, in my opinion, this is good if you're always going to follow community and you wish to contribute. But if you're working on a more proprietary system and you need you want something that's that has less changes imposed, then you would go ahead and use the Nginx Inc. Uh, version, which you know tends to be more stable because there's not you know constant activity on there, and there is good support as well from the maintainers of that community. But but um, it's it it moves in a different direction than the actual Kubernetes community uh, ingress controller. So we, we can talk a little bit after that, later after that, if you, anyone wants to meet me uh, outside. Okay, so um, in Ingress Nginx, uh, it's pretty simple, the organization of, of the main files that we're gonna edit today. So we're gonna take a little bit of, of a look at the deployment, which contains all the YAML files to create a standard deployment. And uh, for Minikube, we don't even need to do that because all we're gonna do is just edit the replication controller that it uses uh, and eventually that's gonna change to a deployment but it'll be a similar process. Uh, we'll look at the documentation page. So there's actually been a big amount of contributors now and one of the main things that people want is documentation. So, so I wanna put like an emphasis on that. And then um, the internal contains all the, the main logic, right? For the controller, where it listens, what it does, where it sends off you know, the request to generate the, the file. And it uses Go templates to, you know, pretty much add all the different variables and things that you set up, either via annotation or via config map. And then, yeah, that, that's where, and the template, the actual template is located in the rootfs directory. So I'll, I'll be going over that. And yeah, so you have your annotations, you have the configuration maps. The way that annotations work is they, they configure us on a specific host or a specific paths. So the way it works is you apply, um, you apply an ingress resource right on host a.com, right on paths, you know, slash a slash b. It'll apply those annotations if they're host level to that host. If they're path level, it'll apply to those paths. And if you want to apply uh, different path level annotations to different paths, then you would go ahead and create another ingress resource with the same host. And, and add different paths and add the annotations and those will be applied to those paths. And it has, and it, it can, uh, it can uh, ignore collisions. So if you have two host level annotations, it'll, it, um, on, on ingress resources with the same host, it'll always take the first one. And that's something that hasn't been documented, but um, something that, that's gonna be available um, after KubeCon. Um, so, and then configuration maps, pretty much edits the global configuration. So any variables that you set there will apply to every server and every uh, location. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, kind of a little bit of, um, of how to do this. So let me go out of here. So. So I created a branch, right, with these changes so you guys can review them after. So there'll be, if you can, if you want to, you can download the actual presentation and there'll be a link on one of the slides and you can actually just see the branch and see kind of what the changes are. So I'll go over uh, each component. So can everyone see this by the way? Yeah, okay. So, so here's the ingress resource, right? We're giving it the name KubeCon. And this is an annotation that uh, that I built in, which pretty much just assigns a nickname to a server. So it'll in the server configuration, you'll see a nickname. And all it's gonna say is, ooh, we're here, right? And then I just have the path echo, which points out an echo server service that I created. So that's just kind of so you can see how the ingress resource works and we can just do some testing. 
And then... Okay, so... So we go to the annotations.go and we just add a new variable called nickname and we add the nickname to the extractor. We import the new parser, right, which, which I'll show you now, which all it's going to be doing is just um, parsing the string. So we have, there's a lot of good built-in tools already for, for these types of things. Um, and the major so everything in an annotation right now has to be a string. Uh, even if it's and then and then it's later translated into what it's going to be a boolean or whatever. So a lot of a lot of the logic is involves string parsing. So so all this pretty much does is it just uh, looks for nickname, right? Looks for the annotation name nickname, and then it just creates it and generates the configuration. So it's very simple. I'll show you what the configuration looks like. I just wrote a test that just checks that the right uh, variable is being set. And okay, that's the configuration. Okay, so then I added the type nickname, and if you see in the actual template, um, if the server contains the nickname item that's derived from the annotation, then we're just going to add a comment that says the server's nickname is server dot nickname, and and that's just pretty much that simple. So if anyone wants to get started, that's a very simple example, just to add you know comments or add any type of configuration into into the uh, template and then nginx will go process this template and it'll generate the nginx.com uh, from that so i've also added a configuration map change so as you can see it's um it's importing it from from all.config which is you know where all the configuration items are stored and what that's going to do is if you actually apply that config map change, it's going to go ahead and make a, a path called slash hello. And then from there, it'll print out a message and return a 200 code. And that to do that, it's pretty much that simple, just adding that in the template and then just setting it up in the config.go file. And then all you do there is just pretty much define, define a default, which is false. And then just add the hello kubecon uh, name, as you can see, hello kubecon. So now if you have data that that's just says hello kubecon and then you put that as true, then what's going to happen is it's just going to generate that slash hello path uh, in your nginx.conf. So then that way on every server, you'll have a slash hello path that will print out, hey, hello, we're, we're at kubecon. So I can I can give you a live demo. I was kind of hard getting a mini cube set up this morning because the uh, network issues, but I think I think everything went pretty well. So let's see. Yeah. You're welcome. So I also um, if you look at the the repository, the the link to the branch that I made. I also added um, a list of commands that would be pretty useful for everyone to kind of just check what's going on and and see. So, so I'll I'll show you a few things. So, so in Minikube, uh, it takes a while to set up. So you would you would start Minikube, you would check the status, and then you would enable the ingress add-on. So you can see right there at the uh, somewhere in the middle there's an ingress enabled. So you would enable that in Minikube would be the would be the first thing you would do. And then you would go ahead and disable the add-on manager so that way you can add your own image. And then it builds a replication controller in the cube system namespace. So as you can see there's one called Nginx ingress controller. And we're going to go ahead and describe that. So you can see the image here, which is the image that I that I ended up building. So for the build process, is it's pretty simple. Um, you just export your Go path, um, select which Docker you're using. I think by default, it defaults to 
to the Google Cloud repository, but I, I, I'm going to make a PR to change that. And then um, I'm picking my local registry and, and just uh, adding a section called hello. And then all I have to do is just add a tag and, and just run make Docker build. And it'll go ahead and just push, push that image to my repo. And then all I have to do is just change it in the replication controller. And there I put hello nginx ingress controller one, uh, change it to that, and now it's running my code on there. So it's pretty simple to get started. Um, make, also make sure you're using the Docker daemon. So that way you're, you're inside the Minikube's Docker and it's just one command. And then, uh, so, so then you can see Okay, so then you can see that we have the Nginx ingress controller pod. And we're gonna go ahead and describe that just to make sure. Okay, and then we can see that it downloaded the correct image. Uh, it was created and then, you know, maybe there was a problem with the HTTP readiness, but that's just because of Minikube issue this morning that I had installing it. So I also added, I also added hello.com to my Etsy hosts and I created this ingress resource. So, so you can see there's the path slash echo I added the actual annotation there with the slash nickname and added a value to that. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and exec into that pod. And I'm gonna cat Etsy. Uh, sorry. Okay. So now we can see what what the configuration looks like. So you can see right now we have. The actual annotation that I created worked successfully. It was able to have the server nickname and woohoo, we're here. And you can see the path was created. That's a default path. You can see the slash echo path was created. And it's pointing to the default echo server. So we can go ahead and curl that. So curl hello.com just gives us the regular default backend, which was set up uh, in the replication controller. And if we do dash slash echo, we should see the uh, echo header service from, from Google. So, so that's pretty simple. Now uh, let's, let's edit the annotation just to make sure that it, uh, it, it takes changes. So we'll edit the ingress resource. And we will add something else here. So we can just say Copenhagen. And now when we look at the uh, servers configuration file, we should see, oh, I didn't update. <laughs> Okay, well, it's not updating. Let's, let's see what's going on. Okay, it shows an update.
So let me just go to the English resource and change that. So there we're applying the English resource. And now let's check if that configuration changed. Let's hope, cross my fingers. Okay, so there we go. I'm not sure what was going on, but. So now you can see that the server nickname has changed to Copenhagen 2018. And then now we'll go over the configuration map. So you can see that there's a configuration map named en Nginx load balancer config. And that, if you look at the replication controller, you can see that the config map is set to Nginx load balancer, load balancer config. So you can always change this in the replication controller and point to a different config map if you have one already set up. So uh, just for this, we're just gonna use this, the standard load balancer config. So let's go ahead and edit it. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a data field right here. And we're gonna, we will add the hello kubecon and set that to true. Okay, so now if we look at the config map, It just has that extra hello kubecon value set to a string of true, which will be translated to a Boolean. And now if we exec and cut the configuration, you'll see a new path defined as hello. And what this new path uh, does is it'll just return a 200 and a string. So if we curl hello.com slash hello, you'll get hello from KubeCon Europe. So yeah, so that seems to have worked successfully. So the demo is going pretty well. Um, and let's see, okay, let's go back to the presentation. Okay. So we just went over um, how to add an annotation and a config map. Uh, and we just kind of briefly went over how to build it and how to edit it and uh, did a little quick demo on that. So, and then um, because of the constraint for time, you know, running, starting Minikube uh, kind of takes some time to do. So, so um, I just wanted to briefly go over the process. So you would just start Minikube you would uh, use the Docker daemon, uh, how I described, and then the Docker daemon would go ahead and, uh, and put you into Minikube's Docker. You'd build the image. You would and make sure that the ingress add-on is enabled and that the add-on manager is disabled so you can change the images. Then you would uh, verify that the image was changed and then run some tests. So. And right now, the end-to-end uh, -end tests were just introduced. So you, if you run make E2E, you can see the end-to-end -end test run. And, and this is kind of a new thing that was released maybe a few weeks ago to like a month or so ago. And uh, so now uh, Nginx uh, controller in the community version now has end-to-end -end tests, which make making it, making a, you know, different enterprise and different customers rely on it more. And, you know, I think that's one thing that's driving adoption a lot. So, uh, so yeah, and there's a lot of big changes. We can kind of see uh, a lot of changes in contribution and, you know, a lot of, a lot more people starting to, to add features to it. Yeah, so, I mean, this, that concludes my presentation. I have a little survey. 
So uh, Manuel, uh, which is the, the maintainer of the project, he, uh, he's trying to look to see what people want out of Ingress Controller to see if we need to add any new features and see what we can do with the actual Ingress Controller. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you can, you can look at that, that QR code and you can just, uh, if you can give some feedback, that'd be really helpful. Uh, and then um, to get started contributing, uh, you just need to pretty much just sign the CLA, which is either done as an individual or through your company. You, you can just start by looking at any issues of, of anything that you see there and, um, and just go forth and look at the issues. And, and usually it's pretty easy and there'll be very simple ones, kind of like this whole server nickname. There's a lot of issues related you know, to just a simple configuration change and adding a simple annotation. So it's pretty easy to get started. And then just go ahead and send the PR and, and we'll look at it and, and be very happy to, to have new contributors. So, so yeah. All right, thank you guys. Thanks everyone. So, and uh, by the way, that's, that's Manuel over there. I think I assume he, he's the maintainer, so he's really cool if you guys got a chance. All right, thanks.